life. We invite you to join us for conversation, looking at life through the lens of love. You are loved, you are made in God's image, and your life matters. Let's talk about it. Hello and welcome back to Let Love Podcast with the Sisters of Life. I'm Sister Veritas. This is Sister Annie Stay. Also, again, a wonderful thing to be back. Double joy. Double joy. And actually, that's what we're talking about today. That's why I think I'm feeling it even more. I know. Let love bring you joy. I love that. It's what we all want. It's what we all want. Yeah. Uh, can't wait to unpack it. Yeah. And just good to be with everyone. And it's a great thing to think about, isn't it? Like joy. And mm -hmm. I mean, it makes one of the things that makes me first think about is actually bringing joy to the streets of New York. You know, they call it man-eating Hatton, but I think for the Sisters of Life, we it's a playground. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and true. it's, I do, I think after living in New York City for 13 years. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I, it's a miracle in itself. <laughs> um, Especially being from Maine. Being from Maine. I know, right? I had to learn to walk on sidewalks. <laughs> I didn't have those growing up. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's it's been so powerful to me to see the power of a witness of joy. What do you? What have you experienced, sister, um, on your adventures on the streets of New York City? Well, I think I mean for sure one of the first things that uh, makes me think of is one of our Christmas traditions. Is there's like you know 20, 20 of us sisters going down and walking like along Fifth Avenue mm -hmm. or other big streets in New York, singing Christmas carols, and it's it's like it's amazing. It's like the blue and white wave, and you literally watch people's faces like. They're, you know, they're on their phone or like super focused or whatever. And it's like their heads lift. And it's almost like this first like surprise, mm -hmm. wonder. And then the smile starts to <laughs> to widen. And it's just, there's it's like, they're it's so happy. They're so filled with joy just to see these, you know, multitude of sisters singing Christmas carols. It's so powerful. It's amazing. And all the encounters we have. Mm -hmm. And sister, pray for me. And, and it's like, you can actually, it's almost like you could see, watch a little light walking along the street and it, it, like lighting up the whole street with smiles amen sister sure. yeah. it's one of my favorite things that we do each year yeah and we are we sing we don't hold back no no <laughs> <laughs> and people will ask why and who are you yeah. and uh i mean i think atheists turn into uh, full full-blooded believers <laughs> Truly, uh, and I think we've experienced that. Yeah, uh, just joyfully singing Christmas songs. Yeah, um, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing, and people singing with us. You know, it gives permission. It's amazing. Yeah, you know where else I see it is um, uh, rollerblading in Central Park. <laughs> <laughs> It's powerful. I, I believe you. I, I firmly believe that you cannot watch a sister rollerblade uh, without smiling. No. I, I remember I was rollerblading Central Park, beautiful Sunday morning, and I was taking off my blades because I was going to walk uh, back to the convent, and this woman crept up. Like, she was timid, but she came up to me, and she's like, listen, um, I'm not religious, but but who are you and what is going on? <laughs> like, it was amazing. She was so captivated. She was so captivated. And I see this even when we might not be the best rollerbladers. Right. You know, I've had a personal experience with that. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned. It was actually, you also have, it was the same experience. <laughs> but rollerblading down the Henry Hudson, like, trail parkway. Right, right. And you know, I'm like one of those rollerbladers, like, um, I can stand up yeah. and move forward kind of thing. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think people uh, can sometimes be concerned for me yeah but there's this one time we were rollerblading and my wheels actually started disintegrating <laughs> so rollerblading. but you know it was fun to keep trying and, and it it's the joy that people they were like joyful of like the sisters who were super fast and then they had joy at me with my wheels disintegrating it's you know we use the equipment we have right and I do remember many, you turned many hearts that day towards the Lord. I think so. Through their, their ministry to you. <laughs> it was. In the disintegrating wheels. Yeah. But even, I mean, I, I remember a sister telling me she, she had, she was really good at like going, you uh -huh. know, like moving, but breaking was something she was still learning. Oh boy. <laughs> and the, the thing about Central Park in New York City, it's a bit unforgiving. Yes. And so she was, she caught an unexpected downhill. And she's coming into this major intersection. Oh, I mean, honestly, it could have been really bad. But <laughs> she 
she managed some sort of cry for help. <laughs> <laughs> and lo and behold, this guy just rollerbladed right up next to her and literally picked her up. Like, <laughs> yeah, cradled her in his arms, <laughs> safely um, navigated the city streets and placed her. I mean, this was like a something out of Superman. <laughs> but the joy it brought to the people, they were all cheering. Really? W- yeah, <laughs> witnessing the big save. And then I'm pretty sure this guy is still smiling. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you, you save a nun. Oh, it's so epic. I mean, that makes your life. It's so epic. But joy, It's right? Yeah. Christian joy. Yeah. Uh, and it's different. It's distinct. Yeah. And it lights up a room. Yeah. And I can't wait to unpack this. Yeah. Well, should we start with a prayer? Let's start with a prayer, sister. That's great. All right. In the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, you came that we might have joy. You desire our our happiness, our deep joy. Uh, and Lord, we ask you to, to lighten our, our understanding, lighten our minds, our hearts. Fill us with yourself that we might have and live in this gift. Um, yeah, help us to know your goodness in this moment and every moment. And we entrust ourselves and our hearts to to you and to Our Lady as we pray. Hail Mary, full of, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, cause of our joy, pray for us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Man, what a title, huh? Cause of our joy. She's she is wonderful. It's amazing. Right. It's her her yes. Her yes to the Lord. Yeah. And that's I think true for all of us. Yeah. Our yes to the Lord. And I think especially sisters of life, joy is a topic close to our hearts. Definitely. Because our founder Cardinal O'Connor from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And he he said there can be no sisters of life without joy. Yeah. So he said, Women consecrated to the cause of life. Uh, laying down their lives that others might have life, in a sense, lives animated, um, upheld from he who is life himself, that joy is a, a essential, mm-hmm. absolutely essential, that we have a God who's with us, Emmanuel, we have a God who has redeemed us, he's won the victory, uh, that no darkness or pain or suffering can overcome. Mm-hmm. So to be a sister of life, is to, um, yeah, receive this great gift of, mm-hmm. of joy that comes from the Lord. And I don't think it's just true for us, actually. This is classic of all of God's witnesses. Yeah, all, it's, a, it's really a Christian call mm-hmm. to be joy, to be joyful. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and look at the saints, right? I mean, the saints were uh, par excellence joyful people. Amen. You know, even those who suffered, the most actually tended to be the most joyful it's right? like this huge paradox well one of my favorite quotes i love it saint john of the cross he says the soul of the one who serves god always swims in joy always keeps holiday and is always in the mood for singing that's awesome saint john of the cross I let's l- let's give him a new image <laughs> i know he is amazing a saint of joy i mean to swim in joy swim in joy how can we not want that Amen. Or even St. Maximilian Colby. Yeah. To be offering your life for another and in the midst of that to be peaceful, yeah. serene, joyful. He had that quiet smile. Yeah. He brought joy to his fellow prisoners um, as they were awaiting death. Yeah. That's powerful. It's powerful. St. John Bosco. Yeah. Right? Um, a saint uh, from Italy. He was a father and teacher of the youth. Born in 1815. And a priest, he was an educator, he was a writer. And how did he appeal to the street kids that he worked with? Um, these, this multitude of children suffering from industrialization during mm. that time. Uh, juggling, joy, mm. the warmth and tenderness of fatherhood. Yeah. Um, Mother Teresa, yeah. right? She said, joy is a net that catches souls. It's yeah. so attractive, it's so compelling. And she stole the world stage. Not just because she was serving the poorest of the poor, yeah. but how she was doing it yeah. with a smile on her face, yeah. with a love that was like, like oil, yeah. um, anointing all those that she came into contact with. 
It's so powerful. And you think of like, you know, St. Philip Neri, right? The patron mm. saint of joy. That's his, it's amazing. It's an amazing patronage. But he was one who was, he, he took himself so lightly in a sense. He was so full of humor, you know, like one time he shaved off half, half his beard and kept the other half on, you know, just to, <laughs> to demonstrate his, you know, like to make, anyway, for humility's sake, but just like this, this joy and delight in life, you know, he had, he had so much fun living, you know, for the Lord. Um, or you think, I mean, like you're saying about uh, Maximilian Colby, but like the martyrs, I mean, mm. heaps and heaps of martyrs literally walked singing to their deaths, you know, dancing to their deaths, so full of joy, right? I, I even think of St. Margaret Clithero, one of the great English martyrs, and she, um, when she was in prison in the Tower of London, she was having such a fabulous time with her fellow prisoners, <laughs> oh, you know, these fellow Christians who were caught and just having a grand old time and, and so joyful. And she's like, I almost feel guilty because it's just been so wonderful being in prison, <laughs> you know? But it's like, in the world's eyes, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. How, how, mm -hmm. how can you be that joyful as you're preparing for death, you know? Unbelievable. And and there she was imprisoned because of her faith. Right. I imagine. Right, for she was harboring priests. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, and here's the deal. It's like, whoa. We all desire happiness mm -hmm. down to a one, mm -hmm. whether you're of faith or not of faith, we desire happiness and joy is this hallmark sign. It's this flag. Um, and I think what we know and can uh, deduce from just experience is that it's a gift from God that in a sense, looking at God's creation, spending an afternoon in the park with those that I love um, mm -hmm. in communion, will elicit and fill my heart with something incredible, that gift of joy versus, um, again, it can be fun, but an afternoon on Netflix. It's like two different experiences mm -hmm. and maybe technology gives pleasure. Maybe other things give measures of or tastes of mm -hmm. uh, good goodness and and happiness. But mm -hmm. the what we're looking for, what our hearts are thirsting for mm -hmm. is this spiritual gift that comes from the life of God. Yeah. It's really true, sister. Joy. Yeah. I mean, there's a great quote from G.K. Chesterton, and he said, man is more himself when joy is the fundamental thing in him. Ooh. It's amazing. We are more ourselves when joy is the fundamental beat of our heart, because mm. um, that's what we're actually made for. We're made for eternal joy. And we can actually, in Christ living in him, mm -hmm. we can start living that now. And we're not just talking about you know, feeling happy mm -hmm. or excited, or it's actually like this deep um, presence, this deep reality that nothing can shake, not even the greatest darkness. Sister, I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, and it, it points us to actually, there's an incredible quote in a beautiful document that was written by Paul VI back in 1975. And uh, it's called On Christian Joy. Mm. So there you go. <laughs> but he speaks exactly of that. And he says this, In essence, Christian joy is the spiritual sharing in the unfathomable joy, both divine and human, which is in the heart of Jesus Christ glorified. Mm. Wow. But And I just, can we just lean into that for a second? Yes, let's lean into it. Because here we are, we're sisters of life, so we're always going to reference the reality we've been made in the image and likeness of God. And joy comes when we live in correspondence to that image and likeness, you know, that we've been made to know and love God, to be in contact with God. Mm -hmm. We have been made to be known and loved by God. In a sense, Jesus showed us what it means to be human when he planted his life so deeply and essentially in this giving and receiving with God the Father. Mm -hmm. So he gives his whole self to God. He receives his life from the Father. And boom, what happens? The Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. right? New life of the Holy Spirit. One of his greatest gifts being joy. Mm -hmm. And that as we live in truth to who we are in God, mm -hmm. when we do God's will, when we seek to follow God into relationship mm -hmm. with God, the living God, joy fills and floods our minds, our hearts, and our souls. It's a side effect. Mm -hmm. It will come. Mm -hmm. And it's something, a gift that we can simply receive. Yeah. And it's an indic like you were saying earlier, it's like an indication. The presence of joy actually indicates the presence of God. Mm -hmm. It's like this little, mm -hmm. like, you know, 
uh, I'm at home. God's God's at home. <laughs> Lights are on. Lights are on. You know, <laughs> it's like it's amazing. It's amazing. Well, I do remember, sister. Even this was before I entered the convent, and I mean, this was in God's providence. I ended up at a Sister of Life profession of vows, and this was one of my first times I really ever encountered mm-hmm. young sisters and sisters in general, and um, and I was I was alive in my faith, but. I was actually blown away. Like I, I was, I was almost angry about it. Mm-hmm. The joy on the face of these sisters professing their vows, giving their whole lives to God, um, basically, and bright women, intelligent women. I actually was almost resentful, and I, <laughs> and I disbelieved it. I'm like, there's no way. Like they're faking it. Like they actually cannot be that joyful. They cannot wow. be that happy. Wow. Um, and then, well, I talked to them. And you hear their stories. And as you stand in their presence, you're like, whoa, this is for real. Mm -hmm. And it's something supernatural. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And then, of course, right, God leads me down a a similar (laughs) path. Um, (laughs) Praise be to God. But it can be shocking, actually. Because it doesn't make sense in terms Mm -hmm. of the world standards, Mm -hmm. in terms of it doesn't make sense. Giving up everything and being filled with joy. What? Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's like it's not a, a human equation it's a divine equation mm-hmm. you know it's powerful um, it really is well and even as you speak of the divine equation um it's shocking when you read the beatitudes yeah because how can a good god tell me that it's a blessed thing to be poor right. that it's a blessed thing to suffer persecution to mourn mm-hmm. um what's going on there that we either have a god who is cruel and mean (laughs) (laughs) or there's a gift that he wants to give a supernatural gift Mm -hmm. that he wants to break into our lives Mm -hmm. with Mm -hmm. and a gift to possess wherever we are whatever we're looking at wherever we're standing Mm -hmm. no matter how light how dark Mm -hmm. how painful how happy right and it's like i mean it really it's like a lifting of our chins you know the beatitudes Mm. and it's um it's actually an entry into his own heart into his own person into himself you know because in the beatitudes and his promise it's actually that's um you know i've heard it described that's actually a portrait of jesus wow you know blessed are the poor in spirit those who mourn the meek you know those who hunger and thirst for righteousness that's actually a portrait of, of the lord mm. especially on the cross wow and so he's actually he, he's saying i want to give you myself Mm. Um, I, I who am the source of all joy, I'm, I want to give me to you, Amen. you know, and that's that he is the secret of true joy, mm. of deep joy, of enduring joy. Well, and even as you say that sister, it helps me make the distinction that joy isn't necessarily a feeling, right? Um, it's not excitement. It's mm. not, um, kind of being bedazzled with life and running around in tulip fields carefree, right? um, it's actually this, this deep receptivity mm-hmm. of the divine life, the resurrected divine mm-hmm. life that God wants to share with me yeah. at every moment. Yeah. It, it's his dwelling in us. It's him dwelling in us the, and me claiming that gift. And the reality of that. And, and like you're saying, actually, I, I'm really glad you made that distinction of, of it not necessarily being a feeling all the time. Because, I mean, I'm sure you've had encounters of this too, but I, I literally remember one person, I was having a, a bit of a rough day, you know, like <laughs> a little stressed about things, but I, talking to this one person and they're like, your joy is so powerful. And I was like, oh, I'm so glad it's Jesus, you know, but it, I'm like, it's for me, it was like, wow, mm-hmm. I'm so glad that you see that because I feel like a total mess right now. Amen. But it was like, no, because it's, it's Jesus in me. Isn't that astounding? It's amazing. And it's, um, and it radiates, joy radiates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's invested in our joy. Like he wants it. Like you think of his first miracle, Jesus' first miracle, the wedding feast at Cana, right? It seems like this, you know, changing water into wine for the sake of the joy of the bride and groom, Mm. right? That was his first miracle was for our joy. How, I mean, that says a lot about the heart of God. Well, and oh, I love that, sister. And then it's a wedding feast mm-hmm. that, I- again, if we step back in that eternal perspective, God desires to wed his life to ours, mm-hmm. to share his whole life mm-hmm. with ours. And that is forth from that sharing comes this incredible joy. Mm-hmm. 
life, yeah. resurrected life. Yeah, yeah. It's powerful. Well, and in that though, it's like, how do we claim the gift? It's a great idea. I think I have like four, maybe five like sound bites. Sounds great. I'd love to. Yeah. Talk about them. <laughs> well, I think first, um, it's slowing down and tucking in to really savor, mm -hmm. to savor life to savor the, the simple gifts, mm -hmm. um, to take on life in each moment like we do a Jolly Rancher, mm -hmm. you know, just, I think we can run through life and it, it opens up fields. Like even Jesus, he, he was aware of the lilies of the field. He was aware of the gift of God's creation. Mm -hmm. And um, God has inscribed himself mm -hmm. in, in life around us mm -hmm. and to, to slow down and savor yeah i think it's so important and to realize god's presence in everything mm -hmm. right like i think I, I was so struck even entering the convent like you know sweeping the floor like sweeping the floor i was so overwhelmed with joy with happiness i remember like i'm literally you know i have a degree and whatever and all and i'm sweeping the floor and i am so mm -hmm. overjoyed right now because i'm doing it for the lord and because he loves me. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know, we're not always going to have that feeling all the time, but it's like little things. He's present in every little thing, washing dishes, Amen. gardening, all to have our, to be able to see, you know, our eyes open to that. Yes, sister. Even listening to a, a young married couple speak about how they s spend their time after their first child is born mm -hmm. and, or being with them. And it's, this beautiful pace of life that simply delights in baby smiling, mm -hmm. baby blinking their eyes, <laughs> baby looking. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. And simple things, yet so filled with life mm -hmm. and bringing such rich joy. Mm -hmm. You know, watching baby fall and, I mean, um, <laughs> savoring the simple gifts yeah. uh, around us. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's really important, savoring the simple gifts. Second, I don't know, keeping uh, an eternal perspective. Yeah, that is so important, sister. I think similar to what we've talked about already, but mm -hmm. remembering, like, I am made for eternity. My, mm -hmm. my life is actually eternal, mm -hmm. actually. And, um, and every, to see everything in that kind of broader vision, yeah, that, that light of, of what I'm called to, it somehow puts things in their place, you mm -hmm. know? It's like this little thing that was driving me crazy. Wow. Even that belongs to God and he's going to do something with it. Absolutely. You know, and I don't have to, it's, it helps us not to worry so much, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if you have thoughts. Precisely, sister. I think you say it so beautifully or not to get hung up on the little things mm -hmm. um, that, you know what, it's okay if I don't get this errand done today, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not going to let that ruin my day if I don't, that, mm -hmm. okay, you know, I, I woke up and I, I tried to love the person next to me as best I could, mm -hmm. and um, the eternal perspective, mm -hmm. and, you know, in the light of eternity, mm -hmm. what does this look like? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it can free us up. Yeah. It can give us space. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and prevent unnecessary worry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and because you, you can't help, you know, when you don't have to live worried, you know, trust. I mean, the eternal perspective also rests in, like, God is taking care of me. Mm -hmm. He sees my whole life. He sees me. He sees my, sees my heart, sees my needs. And when you don't have to worry about yourself, like, it's like the experience of being a little kid. Yeah. You know, mom and dad are totally taking care of you, and you can play in the mud, and you're so happy. Amen. Because mom and dad are taking care of you. Like, we can actually live like that. We're called to live as children jesus said you know unless you become like a little child you can't enter the kingdom of heaven amen that's what he's calling us to that's that's really i think the eternal perspective there it is sister yeah and as we live there we do taste that kingdom mm -hmm. now today mm -hmm. in the present moment mm -hmm. we gain access we get into contact mm -hmm. uh, with that mm -hmm. i think third um i think we have to be intentional about seeking to encounter this risen Lord, mm -hmm. to allow him to share his heart with us and the life of his heart mm -hmm. with our hearts. And I think the the easy, easy points are the life of the sacraments. Yeah. In a sense, the Eucharist, mm -hmm. receiving our Lord 
truly present, mm-hmm. um, risen and given mm-hmm. to me, this gift of love. Mm-hmm. Um, confession. Oh, it's wonderful. Confession <laughs> is awesome because as we turn away from sin yeah. and we allow love to, 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 to wash over our sinfulness, we are able to turn our life to God. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're made for. We're made to stand and live looking at God, mm-hmm. to worship him, to uh, adore him, mm-hmm. to praise him. Mm-hmm. And actually, it's so powerful when we worship, when we praise, when we adore, when we're living in those dispositions. Oh my goodness, check your heart. Yeah. Because we're free. We're carefree. We're light. Yeah. We're filled with joy. Yeah. As we are not looking at ourselves and not way down by our sins but looking at god mm-hmm. um yeah I, I think sister i think it's so powerful well actually i think that's a great segue to to the fourth mm-hmm. point would be um mm-hmm. you know giving of ourselves um this self-forgetfulness this kind of outward facing posture of the heart which is exactly what you're saying with praise and worship Amen. um but it's i mean it really is i think self-forgetfulness is something that's not talked about a lot mm-hmm. um but it is really the secret of happiness the saints say you know saint therese talks about how it's the secret of joy is self-forgetfulness um, because when we're like you're saying when we're facing outward we can receive um we're not you know navel gazing and, and mm-hmm. trying to figure everything out in our in, our, in, our, in ourselves not not to say we shouldn't you know do our examine and that kind of thing but it's like i'm i'm held by someone and i'm living for something other than myself amen yeah Amen, sister. I think it's so huge, actually. Because mm-hmm. I think as if we turn inward for too long, mm-hmm. we get caught in these tumbleweeds. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, if we turn outward and bring it, uh, actually turn it over mm-hmm. to God, um, he actually will take care of it, mm-hmm. and he'll do a much better job. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's so, really true. Yeah. And I mean, I can, I can attest to this myself, you know, being... I remember moments I've been stressed and like worried of all these things and like Jesus help me figure out this problem and this problem and this problem and ah and I remember just pausing and I was like because really I was trying to figure it out and just telling him how I was trying to figure it out but just pausing and I was like praise you Jesus bless you Jesus thank you Jesus and it's like suddenly it like it all just washes away mm-hmm. and it's like joy comes you know um yeah and, and actually the joy of kind of connected to self-forgetfulness the joy of almost the reality i can't do it i can't mm-hmm. figure it out you know mm-hmm. i i and i'm not supposed to mm-hmm. it's really um there is a joy from that that jesus will do it and he mm-hmm. wants to do it mm-hmm. yeah well and i think as you say that sister it frees us from the spirit of control mm-hmm. or kind of this overdrive and control or self-preservation mm-hmm. um we are able to actually rather than spend all this energy preserving myself as we turn ourselves over and as we give ourselves to Mm -hmm. God and to others, um, all this space Mm -hmm. is created to to welcome this life that Mm -hmm. is God. Mm -hmm. And I think probably brings uh, the last point, which um, number five, to live in joy is uh, to to establish um, a regular life of prayer Mm -hmm. that really... that fits your life, you know, that um, we don't want to try to be a, a contemplative cloistered nun when we're, we're a mom of five or right. working a nine to five, um, but that God intends um, and wants to live life with you. And just finding those touch points where mm. you can open your heart to him, hear his heart speaking to you, and find traction in just being mindful and present to this great life Mm. uh, that is seeking to live with, to be with, and to bless Mm -hmm. at every moment. Uh, So yeah, right? Savor the simple gifts, you know, lift your mind and heart into the eternal perspective. Um, This is perspective of faith in a living God. You know, seek ways to encounter the risen Lord. Um, Give of yourself, you know, self-gift, it's imitating the perfect man, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, finding ways to pray mm-hmm. in and through each day. I love that, sister. I think it's so powerful. Yeah. Well, before we go, do you have any any thoughts? <laughs> My thought is to leave you with 
um, just the Word of God, mm. uh, which is a short and simple quip that I think can be very helpful. Um, and it's from Nehemiah, if I said his name, the obscure <laughs> <laughs> prophet, <laughs> prophet <laughs> alert. But uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Wow. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm. And to think about that, what was the joy of the Lord? Mm. Uh, to do God's will, to do the Father's will, to receive his life from the Father, uh, to um, allow his life to pass through that Paschal mystery, um, to claim the gift of resurrection for himself, but also for all of us, and mm. that we have access to that. Mm -hmm. How about you, sister? I, well, I love that. I think it's a really powerful challenge, sister. Um, I think I think I want to challenge myself and uh, everyone, I guess, to um, to kind of engage that self forgetfulness we talked about, but not in the sense of like, Lord, I'm I'm, I'm so, you know, help me to be self forgetful, Lord, because that's actually still looking at yourself, but <laughs> but in moments when we're stressed or we're you know we're you know worried, or to just take a moment to praise Him for something, hmm. or to tell Him. A wonderful thing about himself like Jesus you're so kind <laughs> Jesus you're so good something but just yeah. to actually um, Lord you are yeah you know blank I think that would be a good challenge and I think I think joy will come from it how beautiful sister yeah yeah praise so, be to God amen let's go claim the gift amen should we close in a prayer sounds good sister in the name of the Father Son Holy Spirit amen Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for thinking of us, for uh, your goodness, uh, for making and creating us, um, for your eternal designs that hold us in love always and that seek to bless us in and through all things, whatever we might be facing or carrying. Um, we ask for the grace to entrust our lives to you, Father. Uh, and for the grace to receive your love, especially those places we need it most, to receive your provident care where you most desire to care for us, and to receive the gift of uh, the spiritual gift, the life of your spirit of joy, uh, that share in Christ's resurrection, that you might fill and flood our lives, our minds, our hearts, our perspective, our day, with that gift of joy. And we thank you ahead of time for your goodness as we say glory be to the Father, to the Son, Son and to, to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless and keep all of you. We'll see you next week. We're praying for you. God bless. This was Let Love Podcast with the Sisters of Life, a religious community of women consecrated for the protection of the sacredness of human life. Be assured of our prayers and learn more at sistersoflife.org.